First of all, I'd like to thank the committee for selecting this meta-analysis for oral presentation. I'm presenting on behalf of the Early Breast Cancer Trialist Collaborative Group and the Writing Committee, and I have no conflicts of interest. I'm going to talk to you today about aromatase inhibitor versus tamoxifen in premenopausal women with ER positive early stage breast cancer treated with ovarian suppression. A patient level meta-analysis of 7,030 women in four randomized trials. So to give you some background, we know that tamoxifen reduces the 15-year breast cancer mortality rate by one-third in ER-positive disease. Aromatase inhibitors are even more effective than tamoxifen in postmenopausal women, but are ineffective in premenopausal women. However, AIs may benefit premenopausal women if treated with ovarian suppression. So we undertook a meta-analysis of individual patient data for four trials of premenopausal women with early stage breast cancer treated with ovarian suppression and randomized to AI or tamoxifen. Primary outcomes were occurrence and cause specific mortality analyzed by standard EBCTCG log rank methods. A p-value of less than 0.05 was used for the significance level for primary outcomes and then to compensate for multiple subgroup investigations, a p-value of less than 0.01 was used for subgroup analysis. To give you some more information about the trials included in this meta-analysis, so ABCSG12 started in 1999. It gave gozarelin as ovarian suppression and randomised to anastrozole or tamoxifen for three years, plus or minus zoledronic acid. There's 1,694 women with ER positive disease with a median follow up of eight years. Tech started in 2003 and gave tryptorelin as ovarian suppression and randomized to exemestane or tamoxifen for five years with 2,635 women and 9.1 years median follow up. Soft also started in 2003. And as the same as text, gave tryptorelin as um, ovarian suppression and randomised to exemestane versus tamoxifen for five years. There was 1,998 women with 7.9 years of median follow-up. And then HOBO, randomised in 2004, gave tryptorelin and randomised to letrozole versus tamoxifen for five years. There were 703 women in this trial with 5.3 years median follow-up. So overall, there's 7,030 women with 8.0 years, 8 years of median follow-up. So to look at these trials in further detail, we have listed when chemotherapy was given for each trial. So in ABCSG12, only neoadjuvant chemotherapy was allowed, no adjuvant chemotherapy. And 5% of women had neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Text. Chemotherapy was optional, and if given, it was given concurrently with ovarian suppression. 60% of women had chemotherapy. Soft uh, chemotherapy was given before randomization, but the patient had to remain premenopausal after completion, and this was given in 54% of women. Hobo chemotherapy was given before randomization, and 63% of women had chemotherapy. So pulling together the four trials plotted is time to recurrence. On the horizontal axis is out to 10 years and the vertical axis gives the rate of recurrence. So out of 7,000 women, 40% were node positive. This plot shows at 10 years, there's a 2.8% absolute gain in any recurrence. So 14.7% versus 17.5% favoring AI over tamoxifen in premenopausal women with ER positive disease receiving ovarian suppression. This slide shows where those recurrence events are coming from and it is split by each trial. So overall for the four trials, the rate ratio of 0.79 gives a 21% average proportional reduction in the rate of recurrence. There was a borderline significant heterogeneity between the four trials, P equals 0.04, P 
but this was mainly due to a NASH result appearing to have been no better than tamoxifen in ABCSG12 trial. Here we have recurrence by follow-up periods. So since randomization, this is split by years 0 to 1, 2 to 4, 5 to 9, and 10 plus. The main benefit from AI and recurrence was seen in years 0 to 4, the period when treatments differed with no further benefit or loss of benefit in years five to nine and little follow-up beyond year 10. Here we have plots for distant recurrence on the left and breast cancer mortality on the right. A significant reduction in the rate of distant recurrence with a rate ratio of 0.83, a 17% average proportional reduction in those randomized to AI. With a median follow-up of eight years, there was no apparent difference in breast cancer mortality currently. To look more closely at the timings of the breast cancer deaths is a plot by follow-up period. So we can see that there was a trend towards fewer breast cancer deaths in years 0 to 4 with tamoxifen, a fewer breast cancer death in years 5 to 9 with AI. This really shows the importance of longer term follow-up for these trials, it's needed to fully assess the effects on breast cancer mortality. So moving on to look at subgroup analysis by recurrence. So there was 13 analyses investigating possible variability in the recurrence rate reductions achieved with AIs within different subgroups. Just as a quick reminder that P of less than 0.01 was used for the level of significance. So the proportional reduction in recurrence did not vary by age, BMI, tumor size, tumor grade, histological subtype, or the presence and absence of chemotherapy. Here we have a subgroup plot for nodal status. This is split by node negative, N1 to 3 positive nodes, and N4 plus. There's a trend for diminishing efficacy with increasing nodal involvement. This shows no apparent benefit from AI in M4 plus disease. The p-value for trend was 0.05, so not extreme and does not reach the pre-specified level. With no good prior reason for anticipating that the proportional effect in treatment might be different by these different nodal status categories. The overall, the overall proportional risk reduction for the meta-analysis of 0.79 may provide a better guide to the reductions that would be achieved in the different nodal status groups than in each of the nodal status groups individually. Here we have 10 year plots for the risk of recurrence split by nodal status. These plots are smooth past five years and it's split by node negative on the left and nodes one to three on the right. If the proportional reductions are similar in different risk categories, then the absolute benefit from AI over tamoxifen should increase with increasing risk category. Here, we are seeing a doubling of absolute gain of AI compared to tamoxifen from 2.4% in node negative to 4.8% in N1 to 3 positive nodes. The finding we see in N4 plus disease was unanticipated. The EBC-TCG meta-analysis that compared aromatase inhibitors and tamoxifen in postmenopausal women published in The Lancet in 2015 showed no suggestion of any lesser benefit in N4 plus disease. Here we have a plot for bone fracture incidence on the left-hand side and non-breast cancer mortality on the right-hand side. So we have more fractures and more women allocated to AI than tamoxifen. At five years, the bone fracture incidence rate was 5% in AI versus 3.8% in tamoxifen. Now, because this meta-analysis is in premenopausal women, few non-breast cancer deaths have actually occurred, only 54 in total. We saw no difference in the rates of non-breast cancer death between AI and tamoxifen. So to summarize, using AI rather than tamoxifen in premenopausal women receiving ovarian suppression reduces the risk of breast cancer occurrence by around 21%. The reduction in distant recurrence, 17%, 
but no effect on breast cancer mortality or overall survival. Longer term follow up is needed to assess this effect. There's been no increase in non breast cancer deaths and more fractures in women receiving AI. I'd like to thank the Early Breast Cancer Trialist Collaborative Group, the trialists who shared their data, the 7,000 women in these four trials. Thank you.